Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. How about that? A year's gone by, and now we're into 2023. I hope that everyone had a chance to spend some time with loved ones over the holidays. I hope you had a Merry Christmas, and I know for many people it was difficult. Uh, but maybe you had a chance to recuperate and think about what to do going forward. I think the coming year will be quite challenging. Many of the issues related to lockdowns have not been resolved, as you know. And over the holidays, I had a chance to read this book and I, I wanted to bring it to your attention. I think it's really important to know about. It's um, by Aaron Cariati, who's a psychiatrist who used to be at University of California, Irving. It's called The New Abnormal, The Rise of the Biomedical Security State. Um, and he's a medical ethicist. He was opposed to uh, mandates and he was opposed to long-term lockdowns. He considers in the book that a short-term lockdown to address a novel virus might have made sense, but he wrote quite a few compelling articles about the mental health impacts of lockdowns on almost everyone. Um, when, one of the things that I found quite interesting in the book is at one point he's, he's still working, he's driving to work during lockdowns because he's an essential worker, uh, being a, a medical doctor and a professor. And um, as he's driving down what's normally a, a jam-packed highway in California, there's almost no one on the road but him. And the sky is all clear and he can see way out into the bay. <laughs> and he, uh, he thinks to himself, well, I bet what they're going to do next is a climate lockdown. <laughs> now, I don't see anywhere else in this book that he really talks about being associated with the climate industry. Uh, so that's just a perception that he saw like that that day. And the reason why I'm talking with you today about the biomedical security state is that for a long time, we at Friends of Science have been concerned about the conflation of healthcare and climate change. And in 2018, The Lancet, which is a fairly well-known, well-respected journal of medicine out of the UK, um, wrote a, um, a very big article about climate change and how we should put up wind turbines and solar panels and have carbon pricing. And we did a video about it at the time because it's just so bizarre. I mean, if, if you're into treating human beings, you definitely don't want to try and do surgery <laughs> on wind turbines where the wind might drop off at any time. Um, or solar panels which only work in a few places and certainly not at night. So we just thought that was very strange and more recently most of the health services in the OECD countries, that's the industrialized nations, most of them have signed on to net zero health care targets. Now they believe that uh, the medical community, healthcare, in terms of the global carbon footprint, is about 5%. And these medical providers are committed to trying to cut that in half by 2030, which is only seven years away. Um, you know, medical services are very energy intense. So we're not talking about people turning off a few light switches or um, you know, maybe um, cutting back on using certain chemicals. We're talking about really dramatic, uh, potentially, in my view, deadly choices that medical people will be making now. Instead of thinking about you and your health care, they are going to be thinking about you as a carbon footprint. Now you might laugh or you might say, oh, well, that's really tinfoil hat, Michelle, but it's not. There's actually a, a journal paper called Geriatric Care in the Time of Climate Change. And this is out of the UK. And in it, they state that elder care, frailty, <laughs> accounts for 7% of that. 
So you understand they're looking at elderly people and saying, wow, you take up a lot of energy. Um, now, what he's talking about here, Aaron Kiriati, he's talking about how various medical services are being designed so that they can actually put you under surveillance all the time. And uh, we've done a couple of videos about climate doctors and about deep fake doctors, about the potential for using artificial intelligence, uh, potentially on the good side as a healing uh, tool, because apparently AI is quite good at assessing um, people's medical conditions based on various monitored uh, bodily uh, measurements that a doctor and nurse would normally take or uh, you know things like heartbeat, um, your a urine sample, blood sample, things like that. But um, you know there are very serious risks in a biomedical surveillance state and Cariati talks about many of them here. It would essentially mean that it would become life under lockdown all the time. Um, and if governments were totally benevolent, and if all the people in the world with power were benevolent people and kind and compassionate, that wouldn't be a problem. But the real problem is right now, most countries have huge unfunded pension liabilities and one way to deal with them is to have people lead a shorter life. I, that, again, that sounds insane, but if you look at the International Monetary Fund, they put out a report in 2012 that said good health care makes people live too long. That creates pension li liabilities, pension fund liabilities, meaning that there isn't enough money to pay out what's promised in pensions. So. These are uh, serious and grim concerns for us all going forward. So that doesn't sound like we're starting the new year on a very good note, does it? But I want to recommend that you read the book or read some of his writings. There are shorter things if you don't like reading long ones. And understand his perspective, because he's an expert in this. Of course, I'm not. I'm a commentator. And one of the things that also struck me is despite the description of the things that he foresees that could be problematic for all of us, he's very emphatic that we should not be afraid. We should be aware of these potentials, but we shouldn't be afraid and we should resist. So I uh, hope that you'll have a look at his writings and I hope that you will consider some of your options going forward. And I hope that you will find a way to have a happy new year and enjoy every day and enjoy the gift of life because it really is a gift. And in these crazy times, I try to look at it every day that life is an adventure. And, um, you know, I didn't have to pay to go and climb the top of the Himalayas <laughs> to uh, challenge myself. I just had to live in this time and here we are. We have big challenges ahead, but let's meet them without fear and with courage and with optimism and hope and um, a desire for a better world. You know, the powers that be have been telling us that they want to build back better. Well, I think that it's up to us to build back better the way we want things to be. So thanks very much and have a happy new year. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.